fires, many of the missing children. The Hawaii Electric Company was negligent with their downed power lines and are now involved in a cover-up. Water held back from firefighters, roads were even blocked, trapping Americans inside the inferno. And FEMA officials have been staying at five-star luxury resorts. But it actually gets worse. The Free Beacon discovered that FEMA, in the middle of all of this around-the-clock search and rescue recovery mission, is telling their workers to focus on diversity training. FEMA is having workers do a three-hour course on equity in the middle of the disaster recovery. The course teaches them how white supremacy is ingrained in nearly every system and an institution in the U.S. It tells its employees that the U.S. is rooted in extreme, extraordinary violence and says that employees must acknowledge that the systemic racism and oppression exist. So while Hawaiians are missing kids and are prevented from seeing their scorched homes, FEMA officials are staying at the Four Seasons and taking a three-hour course on white supremacy. I hate to tell you, but it actually gets worse. Hawaiians are being evicted from their homes so landlords can cash in. We've been receiving call after call of people who are being asked to be evicted by their landlords. People who are being displaced during a time of emergency when their house was like the only house standing in their neighborhood. Simply because the owner of the house realized that their investment is no longer a sound investment. Why are people getting evicted if their homes didn't burn? Well, this is interesting. Less than a month before the fire, the Democrat governor of Hawaii, Josh Green, signed an emergency proclamation concerning Hawaiian real estate. To my knowledge, this was the first emergency proclamation in the country that didn't have a preceding incident. This was just, from my knowledge, was just to streamline development on Maui, and it is allocated all decision-making power to one person, uh, the housing officer of the governor, Nani Medeiros, who's unelected, who can trump every single thing that you do. They're meeting with developers, private, um, private landowners, and not a lot of community. Maui residents say this is highly suspicious. The emergency housing proclamation was declared weeks before the actual emergency created a housing emergency. This emergency proclamation has been described as a gift to developers. The residents are apoplectic because of all the emergency powers. They go to a housing czar, and residents get no say. Now the residents think developers, government officials, and all those billionaires have bought up land in Hawaii, like Zuckerberg, Oprah, Bezos, are going to take advantage of the devastation. We busted our ass, and this is what we get. Nobody called us. Our phones didn't work from 5 in the morning. The fire was not 10 o'clock when I went to work. The fire was still there. There was no water. Tell me if that's not coincidence. No water, no warning. And everybody talking about the satellite city before the fire. Lahaina going to be the first satellite city. Well, hey, Jeff Bezos, you got what you wanted. Oprah, you got what you wanted. And the guy who owns the nut, you got what you wanted. Us all over. Many of the Maui residents are worried that their town is going to be turned into a smart city, a tech hub where wealthy people work remotely, massive data is collected, and middle class people are priced out. Primetime has no idea what's going on. The governor of Hawaii calls this all a conspiracy theory. But when all of these tragedies and mishaps converge, it leaves vulnerable people searching anywhere for answers. Representative Diamond Garcia is a member of the Hawaii House of Representatives. All right, Diamond, tell us what people are thinking here. Well, the fact is people are confused. It's been three weeks, Jesse, and there's not been any clear answers. I mean, these people have lost everything, their homes, their families, their loved ones, their children, and they're crying for answers. They need answers. And unfortunately, the response from the federal, state, and county governments has been pretty quiet. When asked what the death count was for children, the answer was, I don't know. When asking FEMA and calling FEMA for, for more resources, they get the voicemail. So people are frustrated here in Hawaii, and it's really sad to see this kind of federal response. So if you have real estate, probably the most expensive in the entire country, and there's a lot of poor people in Maui, there just are, and then a fire comes through and just rips it to shreds, and developers are licking their chops.
Is this why people are so concerned, especially when the fire water wasn't uh, ready, or the, you know, wasn't given to the firefighters and all of these things keep adding up? Absolutely. The fact is, just days after the fire burned down the entire town of Lahaina, realtors and developers were calling residents who lost their homes and offering to buy their properties. So people immediately caught on to what was going on. And it looks like right when this happened, the developers came down like vultures and tried to take their property. Oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. This, this guy, Green, who runs this island, I hope he does the right thing because we're going to hold him to account. And I mark my words, we're going to hold this guy to account. Diamond, thanks as always. Tell everybody. And